Hello and welcome to Tomorrow's Past, our ongoing exploration of past predictions of the future. Today, we are going way back, further back than we ever have before. We are going to be looking at four examples of retrofuturism from the early days of film. Now, by early days of film, I mean the late 1800s up until the 1920s. We have looked at this period before outside of the context of retrofuturism. A lot of what was produced during this time was rooted in theater. They were presented like plays, uh, also experiments, uh, you know, trick photography. As we sometimes run into, it is hard differentiating between retrofuturism and sci-fi, so a couple of these fall under the aesthetic rather than a true prediction of what might be. Let us start with 1901's A la Conquête de l'Air, or Conquering the Air. This was directed by Ferdinand Zecca and distributed by the Pathé Frères. The Pathé Brothers had been known for their documentaries, and this was an attempt to broaden their horizons, more or less. Now this film is very simple. This is actually it, a man riding over Paris on a flying bike, an effect achieved using a matte technique. Worth mentioning, we are still two years away from the Wright Brothers' flight. People have dreamt of flying for millennia, and this was Zeka's way of realizing it. Notice the ship wheel steering. We've seen before how nautical travel inspired early designs for other kinds of speculative crafts, uh, usually spacecraft. The body is possibly filled with air, and the driver propels himself effortlessly just by pedaling. This next piece would fit in with our sister series, Richard Futurism and Animation. Also, actually, Animation Propaganda. This is Ever Been Had from 1915. Now, calling this animation is generous, the movement is extremely limited, and much of the story is told through speech bubbles, uh, similar to comics, which gets old very quickly. It is British-produced wartime, uh, World War I propaganda, directed by Cecil Birch. It takes place in the mid-60s, with an alien from the moon visiting Earth. It meets the lone survivor of the Great War, who explains that the planet's cities were destroyed during that war. The survivor recalls rumors that the Germans were using advanced weaponry. We get a spaceship-looking aircraft dropping bombs, and tanks that literally crawl with the help of a mechanical arm. In the end, it's revealed we are on a film set, and there is only one German left, and they are confined to a zoo, uh, which is a pretty unsatisfying ending. Up next, we have The Fugitive Futurist from 1924. The story here is an inventor approaches a gambler, down on his luck, with a camera that sees into the future. It apparently does so by amplifying the particular vibrations in the ether, as how it's described at least. He is not looking for money, he is apparently being hunted, and is looking for someone to trust his invention with. The gambler is not concerned with the fantastic ideas presented to him, but is interested in the idea that it could help him predict the winner of the next race. The futurist convinces him he can, but just as he gives him the device, two cops show up. It's revealed that there is no camera, and that the futurist is mentally ill. A doctor is looking for him, and so the police take him into custody, brutalizing him in the process. This short has great special effects. Uh, the future is revealed by the current images melting into the predictions, which looks really cool. It's pretty level-headed in terms uh, of these predictions. An elevated light rail system over Tower Bridge will alleviate traffic, airships will see widespread use, and Trafalgar Square will become flooded, possibly due to climate change. The final piece we are going to be looking at is Maurice Elvey's High Treason. This takes place in 1940, though it was later changed to 1950, and finds the world on the cusp of World War II. The producers could not have known they were just 10 years away from the actual Second World War. Tensions are up between the United States of Europe, made up of European countries plus Canada, as well as Africa and Asia, and the Empire of the Atlantic States, which is comprised of the US and South America. Politically, it's interesting seeing where they thought allegiances and power would lie. London is where their equivalent of the United Nations is, <laughs> obviously pre-World War II devastation. The film is visually striking, uh, there is some great miniature work, I love their prediction of where the automobile was going, though their aircraft <laughs> leaves quite a bit to be desired, uh, there is no real improvement on the then current designs. The shower of the future comes with a heat drying system, kind of like a hair dryer for your body. Innovations include television and video calling, as well as the sound system that replaces a traditional orchestra. One person controls the instruments with a console. High Treason's plot is full of melodrama, and aesthetically it is very similar to Fritz Lane's Metropolis, which came out two years earlier, and is notable enough to one day have an entire episode dedicated to it. Uh, so we will not be talking about it here, and with that in mind, this was not meant to be exhaustive. Let me know if I missed anything in the comments. Uh, I also couldn't find a charity to tie in with this, so I just gave to a local food bank. They always need help, so if you have money to spare, it goes a long way there. 
If you like your Retrofuturism a little smutty, we also have a new episode of Retrofuturism and Animation exclusive to Patreon, looking at Belgian cartoonist Pisha's The Big Bang. $5 a month gets you access to that and dozens of other exclusive videos. So again, if you can, please consider supporting us there, patreon.com slash pixandportraits. As always, thank you so much for your interest in this channel, and thanks for watching. Stay safe out there.